what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself now we got to talk about dj khaled now dj khaled has been taking a beating for a minute now people says yo this dude is trash he's annoying he's getting on my nerves uh, sean c and ARTV are two of the people who are prominent on YouTube. Nothing against them. These are just videos that popped up when you search like DJ Khaled is trash. But it's so much of this. And when DJ Khaled basically threw shade at Tyler the Creator when Tyler beat him on the Billboard charts, didn't exactly help his case. It only fueled this fire. But the question still remains, how did a trash producer get so many hits? He has, I'm the one, wild thoughts, hold you down, we taking over. I'm so hood in the I'm so hood remix, so many hits. But the question remains, what does he do? DJ Khaled is basically a rap game version of Tommy from Martin. But before we really break down what this guy does and how he was able to truly take over, First, let's go back because in DJ Khaled's case, he didn't just become trash overnight. After all, he's been in the music game over 20 years at this point. He worked as a college DJ. He threw a lot of epic house parties that he's still known for throwing today. He worked on the radio and actually had one of the top radio shows in terms of listeners in South Florida. And that meant a lot because he was a nighttime radio shows and those don't always get a lot of views. He was a production assistant on Fat Joe and Fabulous projects back in the day. He ran the mixtape DJ circuit and then in 2008, he formed We The Best Music Group, a record label. So that brings us back to once again, what does he do? And he has two primary things that this guy does. Number one is he is a producer, but that brings a larger question into play. What the hell does a producer do? Because at the end of the day, there's actually a lot of bad information about what an actual producer is. A lot of people think that a producer is somebody who creates beats, right? People who create beats can be producers, but everybody that creates beats is not a producer. And a producer can not even know how to play an instrument, might not even go into the studio at times if you really want to get down to it. The best way to think about a producer is to first look at a movie producer, right? Get outside the genre so you can get a better idea idea of what a producer does and by the way they ask the same thing a lot of times in the movie industry as well what do they do well here's a great article on vulture.com titled what the hell does a producer actually do and a quote from the article says basically a producer takes care of all the parts of developing and shooting a project that no one else wants to do so that the writers can write and the directors can direct and actors can act without having to deal with anything annoying it's a hustle and it's exhausting but it's our job and a later quote from the same article says great material ultimately comes from the minds of great creatives but it is also the producer's job to help them make their material better without getting in the way and protecting the creative team's vision from detrimental interference from buyers that means the money people so this should give two insights one how the producer's role is to really take care and nurture the creativity as a whole and to be able to maintain as much as that possible when it comes to going through the actual record label system or the movie buyer system but two also why it's so hard to understand what a producer does their job is undefinable because their job is to do the things that are necessary depending on whatever the specific job is they're the glue guy if dj Khaled was the warriors he'd be draymond green and in music a producer needs to have an ear and to understand how to bring people together not necessarily be able to play a drum pad or understand specific instruments now in dj Khaled's case to say he is still Feel extremely active in the process is you know it's pretty naive right after hitting a certain level of success it's just natural progression of business to have other people under you to take care of things that you once did yourself and to be as close as you once were yourself but it'd be equally dumb for a founder of a business to keep doing specialist work as it grows into a multi-million dollar company you can't do both and try to keep it real in that way in business because why it might look cool that you're always in the studio and being hands-on you're limiting the growth of the business and as the runner of the business your responsibility should be growing the business and taking care of people within it to be honest in some ways it's a larger conversation about social classes because you know people always say that their managers and their boss's boss is so lazy right they don't do anything but then so many of the bosses say their people are lazy but at the end of the day most people are trained to believe work means being present and hands-on 
one. The majority of the world is the working class and that's what work looks like to them. But we don't say stuff like this when it comes to people like Kanye West because he's shown his hands on talent in the music world. But when it comes to fashion, he's a little bit more of a DJ Khaled type, honestly. But what people need to understand is that does not discredit your vision and your ability to execute because these people, the producers, they need to be able to organize. Organizing is a talent. It's this intangible thing, right? Handling these other things, seeing other things that other people can't see because you could take people like Gary V. People aren't running around saying Gary V isn't talented, but he's just as loud as DJ Khaled, maybe even louder and more present than DJ Khaled. And he himself has said he can't pass his own test that's required to work for him right he has a different set of skills but he's trying to find people with these other skills that are more standard right the things that we will usually associate with competency when it comes to marketing and business but he's the guy who understands the architecture right he gets the designers to fill the rooms the the, the builders to build the walls but he understands the architecture that needs to be in place to be effective in whatever he does and be able to see the pieces that as they come up and where they fit a perfect example of this is a great moment from the Steve Jobs movie. What do you do? You're not an engineer. You're not a designer. You can't put a hammer to a nail. I built a circuit board. The graphical interface was stolen. So how come 10 times a day I read Steve Jobs is a genius? What do you do? And then Steve Jobs responds, musicians play their instruments. I play the orchestra. And that analogy perfectly explains what producers do and what so many other people who are running companies do. That's just a part of the process. And the reality is when it comes to producers, like in the music industry, there's so many of these guys that people don't understand have a group of people running and creating projects, creating beats where the producer that you know is just the name brand. It's not just DJ Khaled. This is a normal practice. Because at the end of the day, at least when it starts, the vision, it comes from the producer. Motivation comes from the producer, maybe getting buy in from people. But it's an intangible talent again. So it's harder to really describe and measure why Steve Jobs became so clear in what he provided was because of the period of him getting exited from Apple. Right. Him being away from years and Apple starting to fail. And then when he came back, it had a resurgence, a massive resurgence. Right. So that made it clear that so much of what Steve Jobs wasn't credited for previously was actually him. He was the heart and soul of that business. And now for DJ Khaled's second job. A lot of people call him a glorified hype man. And as you can see in these comments, people say DJ Khaled is the most overpaid hype man ever. Khaled is hella overrated. Oh my God. I saw him when he opened for Beyonce. He's a good hype man. That's about it. Now, if we just say he's a hype man, but you say he's overrated, that sounds like he's very good at his job, right? So how does that work out? Because if he doesn't have talent or he's not really good at anything, then he shouldn't be even known if he's just a hype man. Understand that when it comes to this whole branding thing, right, this whole marketing thing, nobody's properly rated. It's too many people in the world. There's too many factors. So if you're underrated, right, then you, your brand isn't doing its job. But if you're overrated, right, that means the hype and the brand and the marketing that's going into place, that means it's happening. The job is being well done because at the end of the day, Beyonce is overrated to some people. Jay-Z is overrated to some people. Martin Luther King is overrated to some people, right? There's always going to be the detractors on either side. But if the work is done well, you'll be overrated to somebody in the first place. And then, of course, you'll have those people that do like you. So that's just the reality of the situation. So with this whole idea of DJ Khaled being a trash producer who has no talent, he does nothing. We got to think about it this way to say he's annoying. You know, you can say yes to that. Right. That's an opinion to say his music is trash. It's also an opinion. But you could definitely say yes to that if you want to. And should he probably give more credit to his team at this point? That would be nice. So trash maybe in consideration of those things but to say he's completely talentless to say he does nothing well that defies logic and at the very least whatever he does he seems to do it successfully whether you know you like it or not and that's it. As always, these videos are brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com. We help artists develop their brand and build their fan base. If you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. 
hit that subscribe button.